version 14 JK BMS inverter BMS. We are on 14.25 and I'm going to upgrade to 14.27. There it goes. 70, 80. 95, double beep, upload fireware successful, Lee. That was it, 14.27. And here the same with the version 15 JK inverter BMS. It's on 15.38, 80%, 90%, Double beep, upload fireware successfully. <laughs> and we are now running 15.40. Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to the off grid garage here in. Thirty-five amps outside is not too bad for these conditions, right? Oh, guys, I'm wearing the red T-shirt. Either something is not working, something is broken, totally f***ed up, or I've got really, really bad news. Well, I guess in this case it is the latter. And you have seen in the intro, I was really sad to do the upgrades on the version 14 and 15 of the JK Inverter BMS because this will be the very last time we have done upgrades on these BMSs. Yes, when you download the firmware versions for these two BMS and open the included text file and scroll all the way down, it says, thank you for your support and recognition of the PB series products launched by JKBMS Gkong. It has been over a year since the release of the PB series version 14 and version 15 of the inverter BMS. Recently, the PB series products have been upgraded to version 19 of the BMS. And this new version is compatible with all the functions and features of the old versions. Due to the factors such as hardware limitations, some new features can no longer be implemented in the old versions of the JK Inverter BMS. Therefore, we announced that from now on, only version 19 will be further developed and supported with new firmware. That's exactly why I was so sad this morning, because this was the last time I did the update on the version 14 and 15 ever, ever. Yeah, well, I still got some more version 14 and 15 BMSs here, so I can do the update again. But officially, this is the end of the support for version 14 and version 15 of the inverter BMS. And I was shocked about this news as well. I talked to Chi Kong and said, are you serious? Are you really serious? You're not going to add any new features to these two wonderful BMSs so many people around the world have? And they explained, no, we can't. What they are going to do with the version 19 BMS basically takes it to the next level. And um, if we... Hang on. I just need to get the version 19. So as we have seen in previous reviews from the outside, there's not much difference, you know. We only can see this additional UART port here from the outside, yeah, where the display connects and this is pretty much everything we can see at the moment. But there's obviously more stuff under the hood here which has changed from version 14, 15, now to version 19 here. This one has, I think, four times more memory than the older versions and also a more powerful and performant MCU. While with the older version, the version 14 and 15, we cannot do, we cannot implement any more features in these BMSs because they are running out of memory constantly. And that's why we sometimes have to reuse existing parameters and build 
and have to make uh, big calculations to implement new features. But this is all very, very limited only because of the limited memory these BMSs have. Just to give you an example, some people use batteries as a UPS. Yeah. If the grid fails, the inverter turns on to battery and supplies power to the house. So now with the existing charging parameters of the BMS, yeah, it would recharge the battery once a day to absorption voltage to 55.2 volts or 56 volts, whatever you have set, then absorb the battery, balance the battery and then go down to float. It would do this every single day basically. Yeah? But with these UPS batteries, for example, it is not necessary to fully charge the battery every single day because they are not getting used. They are sitting on 53.6 volts and are not getting used at all because there is no power loss. So every day you are topping off this battery and obviously this is not great for the battery. So possible solution would be to increase the float timer from six hours to four weeks, for example. Yeah. Yeah. If you fully recharge such a UPS battery only once a month, that would be absolutely okay. But the timer in the version 14 and 15 can only be set to 24 hours maximum. Yeah. And I've asked Jikong to increase this to four weeks. And they said, we can't. We are running out of memory. The timer cannot run that long in these two versions. But for example, it can in the version 19. We can easily extend here the float timer to 28 days. So this new feature will come very soon. Yeah, and whatever ideas we have to implement into the JK inverter BMS, it is not really possible anymore with version 14 and 15. So they made the final decision now and said, we have stopped making version 14 BMSs for a long time. And they recently have switched the complete production from version 15 to version 19. So all the new BMSs you buy now have this additional UART port here and the upgraded hardware inside. There might be still older versions flying around in the universe of AliExpress and Alibaba. So when you order the inverter BMS, you have to explicitly ask them for the version 19 BMS with the UART port if you want the new BMS. What are we doing with the older BMS is version 14, version 15, which I solely have here in the off-grid garage. I have only these two test models of the version 19. Everything else is version 14. Majority is version 15, but I have also a lot of version 14 BMSs here. So I've asked Ji Kong actually say, okay, if you want to key support for these two BMSs, please make a final last firmware with all these features here people have requested from you. Yeah. And I went through some of my videos and have looked at some requests from people and have picked the ones which were mostly requested. All these firmware versions for the three different models of the JK Inverter BMS now have the exact same functionality. So the last update for V14 and V15R at the function of parameter import and export. So we will get these functionalities for these older BMSs. We now also have two additional parameters for the heating functionality of the BMS. Yeah, this was a big request from you guys because before this update, the heater actually kicked in with the low temperature disconnect. Yeah, but then it's already too late and the BMS has already disconnected the inverter. The heating should actually kick in before and prevent the under temperature disconnect from happening. So Qigong has implemented two more parameters now. It is called TMP start heating and TMP stop heating. And we can see this actually here in the background in the JKBMS monitor software. The temperature stop heating 10 degrees default and uh, temperature start heating 5 degrees default. And you can now just change this here and send this back to the BMS as per your needs. Yeah, if you want two and five degrees, for example, there you go. And this controls now the heating output of the inverter BMS, version 14, 15 and 19. So what else is new? Um, RCV and RFV timer limit range has been modified to a maximum of 25 hours. This is also for all three BMSs, but, but this was just the example I gave you. 25 hours is the maximum we can set in the version 14 and 15 of the BMS. This one will get the upgrade to 28 days at some stage. In this final version, they have also added uh, two more CAM protocols for an NMEA 2000 and PGN 
to whatever it says here. I don't know these inverters. And they also have <laughs> they also have fixed the problem that the BMS actually loses the cycle count when you do a firmware upgrade. Super annoying when you have the BMS for a long time and you have a lot of cycles already counted by the BMS and then just by a pure firmware update it resets everything to factory default again. I said to Qigong, well what's the point because you are not supporting these BMSs anymore so there will be no further updates for these two versions. But obviously this new feature has already made it into the version 19 BMS as well. So it is actually good. This has been solved and rectified, but it is not important anymore for the version 14 and 15 of the inverter BMS because there will be no further updates for these two BMSs. And this is pretty much everything they could implement into the last firmware. That is it, my friends. So guys, it's sad as this announcement from Gcon is for all of us, yeah, for the whole do-it-yourself community. I can somehow understand where they're coming from and that they're trying to limit their workload on supporting three different firmware versions for three different hardware versions of their BMSs and development always continues. So version 19 is the latest and greatest at the moment, a lot more memory and a more powerful MCU. So hopefully it will stay for quite a while and we are not seeing another version 20 or so next year because then we start testing DALI, right? So, but the question is now, what are we doing with the old versions now? What are we doing with 14 and 15 of the JK Inverter BMS? Well, if we have a look at the app, for example, now, um, let me go into, yeah, and have a look here at the parameters of this version 15 BMS now, for example, yeah. I think the version 14 and 15 BMS are pretty, pretty, pretty good with this latest version of the firmware now. Of course, there are always people complaining and wanting more features. And I'm getting a ton of emails where people say, well, I've got this and this and this set up and the BMS cannot do this. These are all very edgy cases. So there are single individual uh, projects and installations where I say, okay, yeah, well, yeah. In this case, the JK BMS cannot do that. It cannot handle this. But no other BMS on the market can do this either in your occasion. Yeah, you need to come up with a different solution to handle your specific project. But these calls from users and customers and people are there. Yeah, they're always saying, well, this is not working or there is something not working for them. But the majority of people with normal setups, either grid or off grid connected batteries, inverters, BMSs, yeah, the, the JK BMS with the skills of the communication to the inverter, to the Victron system here, controlling everything, managing absorption voltage, absorption time, float voltage, float time. Now the heating start and stop. I mean, come on, which other BMS does that? Here, we've got two dry contacts, two relays on this BMS, which we can freely program. Set up the trigger to low state of charge, battery over voltage, battery under voltage, cell over voltage, charge over current, MOSFET over chamber, system alarm, remote, con everything you want, you can set up and trigger this relay, which gives you additional functionality for your personal setup, for your project, for your system. If you have several batteries, all with version 15 BMSs in there, perfectly fine. Don't change it. Keep the version 15 BMSs. They are brilliant. All the functionality is here. Yeah, they do the full charge absorbing and float cycle for you. You can set everything up in the BMS and it drives your inverter accordingly. This works perfectly fine now. However, if in the future we are coming up with new features for the version 19 BMS, yeah, which will not be implemented anymore on the version 14 and 15 due to memory and MCU um, limitations. And if you desperately want them or need them to drive your system, your project further, what you could do simply is replace one of your BMSs with a version 19 BMS and make this your master. Because all these charging features like absorption, float, timers and voltages and everything you can set, they are only important for the master BMS. 
right? This is the one which is connected to your inverter. The slave BMSs in your other batteries, they can stay version 14 or version 15 BMSs and can have totally different settings as the master. The master is what is important and drives your charging and discharging algorithm of your battery. So if you are in need of these new features, of these future upgrades, whatever will come, yeah, you buy one version 19 BMS, make this the master and you are back in business. And if you don't need any of these features coming in the future, don't worry about it. The existing versions work perfectly fine. So, and in the last probably two to three days, I have fully tested these last firmware versions for the version 14 BMS and version 15 BMS, which is in here. I've done all the cycle tests as master, as slave, and could not find any problems anymore. They're communicating with each other. They're communicating with the version 19 of the BMS. So thankfully, Jikong made this all compatible. Version 19, version 15, version 14 are all communicating wonderfully, beautifully together. And it doesn't matter which of these versions you set as the master or slave. It doesn't matter. It all works together. It's incredible. Yeah, unlike so many other BMSs we have tested before. And also the big um, battery manufacturers, Global Power, Eel Battery or Yixiang, they are also upgrading their existing fleet now um, and preparing for the version 19 of the JK BMS. That only means they have to upgrade the front panel of their battery to suit the new uh, display. So whenever you buy uh, batteries or do-it-yourself cases now, make sure they've got the version 19 of the BMS included. You can see this easily on the display on the front panel. Yeah, this is basically the new display with the, uh, with the glass. And it looks completely different to the old one with the plastic frame and the button here on the side. And there might be a transition time where they have still old stock with version 15 BMSs. So you can potentially ask for a bit of a discount or if you don't care, just take the batteries with the version 15 BMSs and live with it. Okay, my friends, I think so far this video from today about the good and bad situation with the JK BMSs. But I think we've got a pretty good BMS already with the version 14 and 15. They're working well. So it is actually a good time to say goodbye to any new firmware updates for these two versions. And I'm really looking forward to see more innovation, more features and more updates for the version 19 BMS now. Because now Gkong has no excuse anymore. They've got only one BMS to maintain. Yeah. And we as the users, as the community will take full advantage of that. So hopefully in one of the next features, we will see the Wi-Fi capability of the JK BMS and also the Oh, I shouldn't spoil it. I actually wanted to do a bit of a charging test here as well with these three different BMSs here, yeah? 14, 15 and 19, but I couldn't fully charge the battery. The weather was just so bad. I have installed the power supply and if we cannot fully charge it tomorrow, we will turn on the power supply and recharge it from the off-grid system a bit, just to get us close to the 55 volts. And then solar is hopefully powerful enough to get us over the hum 55.2. And we want to see how these three BMSs react, how this all works in a parallel situation. So this will be an interesting test because thankfully all these different versions of the BMS are talking to each other. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here, for all these generous donations you are doing, for everyone who is leaving comments and liking and sharing these videos. And thank you very much for everyone who is helping me replying to comments down in the comment section of each video. Yeah, I'm seeing a few names popping up frequently now. They are helping other people out, answering questions, and this helps me a lot. I'm reading all the comments, but I'm not able to reply to all comments. Sometimes it takes a bit of time and sometimes you get into a conversation with people then, which I really like. But it's also very beneficial for me if other people reply to inquiries. And this frees up a lot of time for me so I can make more videos for you. So thank you very much for that. And you know what's coming now. Until the next video, guys, when we do the full charge of the Global Tower here. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.